Bloomberg and National Security Military Analyst and International Relations Expert Rebecca Grant. Rebecca, good morning to you. So this is President Biden's fourth G7 summit. How much does this one matter and what are you going to be looking out for to take place today? This G7 meeting is actually pretty important. You know, Carly, at this point, the G7 is a power center. And the, what's new here is this long-term commitment to Ukraine. Uh, Biden and Zelensky will sign a 10-year deal. Now, Congress will still have to fund that. But other G7 members, Canada, Britain, Germany, and host Italy, have already made a 10-year pledge to Ukraine. And that is a huge message to Russia and to their overlords in China that while Ukraine isn't joining NATO, Europe and the G7 and NATO members are behind Ukraine against Russia for as long as it takes. And the financial asset deal is backing that up. Let's get into a little bit more detail on the Ukraine deal as we look at French President Emmanuel Macron meeting with the Italian president. What will the security agreement with Ukraine do differently from what the American taxpayers have already provided for over two years now. Well, it will be more of the same, but there is a new component. It's taken them a while, but they figured out a clever deal to take the $260 billion of frozen Russian assets and use the interest from those assets to service a new loan to Ukraine that goes for Ukraine's government operating expenses and to help their economy. Also, a new Patriot missile battery, and that's very important, is going. But the real point here is the policy pledge that it is a long-term pledge. Kind of, you know, even if Ukraine is under pressure on the battlefield, even if it's going to take a couple of years, here is the G7 saying we will stand behind Ukraine. The line stops here. Russia will not win as long as it takes. And backing up with these bilateral security agreements, which they're doing in place of a Ukraine NATO membership, which they're not ready to do yet. Yeah, one, one little detail is that all of these world leaders are very lucky to be going to the G7, hosted in one of the most beautiful regions of Italy. They're going to the Borgo and Nazia in the southern region of Puglia. It's a, a luxury hotel with a Michelin-starred restaurant. Sure. So some delicious meals will be shared together by all the leaders of the seven uh, largest global economies. Uh, on the other side of all of this beauty is, is a little bit of fear as what's happening outside of this G7 summit, because yesterday four Russian naval vessels, including a nuclear powered submarine, arrived in Cuba, which is, of course, our backyard. You have to wonder about the timing of this and what sort of message Russia wants to send with that. OK, do not worry. The Coast Guard plus our U.S. Navy is there and watching all that. But you're right. Russia is sending a message. The naval vessels in Cuba are part of it. The Jen Stoltenberg, head of NATO, said uh, members are worried about Russian spy activity in Europe. That's a big concern in Britain as well. And, of course, the nuclear threat. So this is Putin acting out. And even though it was a little offensive or near Kharkiv is stalled out, he's trying to show that Russia is in it for the long fight. So the G7 does have a lot to push back on, even in their luxurious setting. And they're going to go after some of the bigger issues. Pope Francis coming to talk about artificial intelligence. So a very interesting meeting coming up. Mm, really interesting stuff. Rebecca, thank you. Let's I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.